This is the Ariel Lauren Show. This is the Ariel Lauren Show. It's the Ariel Lauren Show. It's all about entrepreneurship. I mean, we have to be real about what the journey's really like. This is the Ariel Lauren Show. This is the Ariel Lauren Show. This is the Ariel Lauren Show. This is the show for the entrepreneur who is ready to make it. This is the Ariel Lauren Show. This is the Ariel Lauren Show. This is the Ariel Lauren Show. Today, I have on the show the woman I credit with helping me redesign my business to feel the way that I want to feel. Jeanette Castellari is a Desire Map facilitator. And if you're not familiar, the Desire Map is a book and program that was designed by the incredible Danielle Laporte. Uh, Desire Mapping reverses the goal setting process, inviting you to really figure out how you want to feel in life first and then set goals in alignment with those feelings. Earlier this year, Jeanette actually hosted a Desire Map retreat in Kauai, Hawaii, and it was hands down one of the most magical travel experiences I've ever had. So Jeanette continues to host retreats, works as a doula, does body casting, and also owns a photo booth business. So she's totally a renaissance woman, but most importantly, she is a woman who is tapped into her core desired feelings and creating the life that she wants to live. Jeanette, I love you, and thank you for coming on the show. I love you too. Thank you so much for inviting me to be on the show. You're going to make me cry already. (laughs) (laughs) So tell me, like, how did you first discover desire mapping and how has it transformed your life since then? I have been following Danielle on social media for uh, maybe a little over two years now. And I just remember seeing little snippets from her and being like, yes, yes, yes. She would post little quotes um, and it always felt really good. And I loved desire mapping specifically, um, because I felt like it was very intuitive to the person who was doing the process. Like I felt like a lot of, there were a lot of programs out there that were telling you how to live and what to do. And Danielle created this process that allowed you to go inward and decide how you wanted to do it. And I love that because I need freedom and flexibility to do what I want and to change my mind and just to really feel it out. And that's all about Uh, what desire mapping is all about. So it just felt really great. Um, So I had been following her for a while and just like kept being inspired by her quotes. And I saw that she was actually coming out with a licensing program and it just pulled on my heartstrings. So I had to listen to it. I was a little bit nervous um, about taking the leap at that time. I knew I wanted to work with women. I wasn't quite sure if workshops were my thing, if retreats were my thing, and I just decided to try it. So I signed up for a workshop myself um, and actually took a desire map workshop that was facilitated by Laren Alta, who's absolutely incredible. And it totally rocked my world, blew my mind. And like that weekend, it was like, yes, I'm definitely getting licensed to do this process myself. Um, And really tapping into the way that I want to feel and making my choices has changed my life. It's, it's made me feel like when I make decisions, it's actually my call. And even if it doesn't make sense logistically, if it feels good, it always works out for me. And I feel like my life has been feeling so much more wholehearted and honest and exactly in alignment with who I am since I started it. So it's just been really beautiful. I think it's really powerful, um, particularly as an entrepreneur, um, to really be tapped into your core desired feelings and to be living from that authenticity, from that feeling. And so I think my next question um, for you as well would more so be along the lines, how do you apply you know, desire mapping to all of the different kind of hats you wear as an entrepreneur, all the different kind of businesses that you run? Um, how do you balance that logistical um, kind of side of business with like how you want to feel? Oh yeah, I do it all the time. Um, when, when I was planning for the retreat, I remember thinking about how I wanting, wanted to market for it. And I kept thinking, okay, I just have to make these flyers. I have to make these flyers. I have to make these flyers. And I was so annoyed that I had to make these flyers, but I just knew, you know, that's what you do. You got to make the flyers. And I was resisting and I spent like days in front of my computer looking at this thing and like not wanting to make the flyers. And then I just remember being like, hey, Jeanette, how do you want to feel? Like, does making the fi- flyers make you feel free? Does it make you feel connected? Like, and the answer just kept being like, no, no, no. And then 
I was like, okay, well, maybe there's another way that you could market that feels better. And maybe you don't have to do flyers at all. So I was like, okay. And it just felt really good and really freeing to be able to say, nope, don't want to do the flyers anymore. And then I just picked something else that felt good to me. And for me, that was a giveaway. And I decided that was going to be one of my main social media marketing tools was to do a giveaway. And it felt good and generous and connected and it felt yummy. Um, and that's just how I did it. And it was great. And nobody was ever like, hey, Jeanette, why didn't you have flyers? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's so <and> funny. <laughs> totally. It's like, you feel like there's this way that you have to do things. And if you're not doing it, then you're not doing it right. But I just find that the more that I feel stuck on something, the more it's probably not the right choice for me. And if I really tap into the way that it makes me feel like, okay, I don't want to spend my time doing that. So what do I want to spend my time doing? You know? Um, so that's, that was a big one for me. Also just work life balance. I don't work a lot of hours a week. I don't choose to, that's just not how I want to feel in my time. And maybe my businesses have not grown as quickly as they could be. Um, but when I stop and ask myself, like, what do I need right now? How do I want to feel? Sometimes I just want to take a bath or sometimes I want to take a four month sabbatical and go off to Kauai because that's what I know I need. Um, and it's done wonders for my business because I'm actually in alignment with where I want to be and what my soul needs. And I feel like when I give myself that space and I allow myself to do what I need to do, then when I'm ready to start back up again, I'm on fire and I'm ready and I'm actually passionate. Um, so it really plays into a big role, like in terms of like my mental, emotional energy in my businesses as well. Yes. Don't you just love that flow? Like when... I think when you're tapped into your core desired feelings, like you just said, like it really opens you up and you, you start asking better questions. And so, yes. you know, here you are, you're tripping about the flies, which is so funny. I <laughs> think, like when I signed up for your sheet, I totally didn't even think or think about your flyers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I totally right. totally <laughs> did it. I totally did it. And, but it's interesting how once you got clear, like, listen, I don't want to make these flyers. Like it doesn't make <laughs> me feel good. Like it makes me feel kind of shitty. And like, <laughs> As soon as you like admitted that, you started to think about something else that really resonated with you and was able to accomplish the same thing, if not actually end up being better. And so um, I think that's fantastic. Um, and speaking of actually retreats, I know that you love hosting retreats. So I'm also curious to know what you find to be different about having women in a space for you know about a week versus an online program or even just a one day program. So why specifically did you kind of choose the multi day retreat model to do your desire mapping um, workshops? Oh, I love connection. I mean, there's nothing like actually passing energy around with a, a big, beautiful group of women. Um, I've done online programs, and for me, I'm just I don't feel connected enough, not because of the host by any means, but I just allow myself to get distracted a lot. Um, one day workshops, three day workshops. Honestly, I've been to a couple of three day desire map workshops and they both absolutely changed my life, blew my mind. So I would definitely recommend those as well. Um, but when I was planning my retreat, the only thing that I would have done differently about the three day workshop is that I wanted more. I wanted more time with the women that I was with because we were doing such transformational work that by the end of the day, after an eight hour day, it was time to go home. And then I didn't actually have time to connect with them. I wanted to hear their stories. I wanted to hear who they were. I felt super deeply connected to them by the work that we were doing, but I, I just craved more time. Um, so I felt like a retreat was a perfect way to create that time and that connection between the women that attended, as well as really pulling you out of your life. Like once you step in that door, you get to close the other doors behind you and be fully present without worrying, oh, is there going to be traffic on the way home? You know, like, am I going to have to get here early in the morning? It just kind of creates that space to actually fully immerse yourself in the experience. Yeah, it totally does. And I can actually speak, you know, obviously from experience and going to your retreats, there were just some days like you get so like desire mapping is so deep, like the way that it makes you really dive into yourself and, and really get honest about what it is that's working in your life and what it is that is not working. Like sometimes you just need space afterwards. Like there were some mornings where, <laughs> you know, we basically had just did something really deep the day before and we, we were emotionally exhausted, I think, as a group. And you were totally like, nope, no desire mapping this morning. We're going to the beach. And like that totally... <laughs> 
was awesome. And, but it's something that's only facilitated when you have a schedule that was as open as yours. And we had so many days to actually get the work done. And even within those days, it still felt a bit like, oh my gosh, like time flew by. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that to me, it was just, it was really interesting. Um, and it actually just affirmed um, my need as well, because I felt like this year I was tired of online programs. I was just like, not that they don't hold their merits because they do. And, you know, they're incredible in their own way, but I was craving more in-person connection. I was craving um, more, I would even say extended in, in-person you know, connection beyond just like I go to a day workshop or a day conference. And mm-hmm. so I really felt like you hit the nail on the head um, with that. So um, my next question is, how do you pick your retreat locations? Um, what's your process like, you know, just spiritually, logistically, you know, what does that look like? Um, when I picked Kauai, it was just, it was so obvious. Um, that one, Kauai was like a total soul place for me. I feel like I've been there five times now. And every time I go back, it's for like this beautiful spiritual experience. I always have an intention going there. It just felt like the energy of the place was absolutely incredible. And I couldn't think of a better place to have my first retreat. Um, I feel like I always come full circle when I'm there and just actually the energy of the land is really, really beautiful. It's subtle, um, but also like gentle and grounding and amazing. And it's been fun thinking about where I want to go for the next retreat because I felt it was like, oh yeah, Kauai. And then I thought one of my friends actually looked at me and she was like, hey, Jeanette, like, where do you want to go? Like, you have this option of bringing people anywhere that you want. um, So where do you want to go? So I'm actually in the process of picking right now. I've always wanted to go to the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. I also feel like there's an energy there I've never been, so I really couldn't tell you, but um, the ruins and the cenotes and the ancient Mayan culture, it just sounds fascinating and beautiful. And I love ocean. I love sunshine. I love jungle. Um, I would assume that 95% of the retreats I end up doing are going to be in a sunny beachy location. Um, But it's, it's all about like, how do I want to feel? Where do I want to go? What feels good right now? Um, so we'll see. I'm just, I'm just feeling it out with everything. Logistically, I, this will be my first um, international retreat. So I'm kind of excited about that. I'd love to go to Haiti in the future. <clears throat> <Sorry>. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just really feeling it out. I'm just picking a place that sounds exciting to me. Yeah, environment is is everything. And and I totally get it, you know, because, you know, even, you know, as you hinted at, you know, with me actually, you know, looking for the right space for me to open my retreat center, um, mm-hmm. you know, being, you know, Haiti, obviously being at the top of the list right now, it's, it, there's something about the energy, the history, the ruins of the land, whenever you're doing, you know, spiritual work. And I'd say even specifically desire mapping, just because of the way that it blows you open, mm-hmm. like, it it's so important to to really feel into that and make sure that there that there's a real connection and that there's a real vibration coming from the earth that's going to support that process. So I'm excited for the Yucatan yeah. Peninsula as well because I've always um, I can't say that I've unlike most people who are like super excited to go to like Cancun or like to hit Mexico. Like I can't say that I ever had that particular excitement, but I can say that I've always wanted to go to Mexico for that spiritual side for the ruins um yeah. you know so it's it's interesting how that's that's coming up I might be joining you for number two. <gasps> Ooh, I would awesome. love that <laughs> yeah so um I would love to know what are some of your favorite places though in um Kauai because it's it's such a magical place and I feel like you took us to some amazing places but I also know that there are so many more places that you probably love too so what let's just say like top two or three Okay. Um, Hyena Beach is my all-time favorite. It's just, it's right by tunnels, if anyone knows where that is. Um, It's my favorite place, especially in the summertime when the surf is low, the water is like glassy, and I love going out there. It's like this beautiful turquoise color, and I just lay, and by lay, I mean float. (laughs) I float in the ocean and look up at these incredible mountains. Uh, The Bali High Mountains are above you, and they're just stunning so that's my number one favorite place um just north of that is the blue room and Ariel, you went there and yeah. that is this gorgeous sacred cave um with water and you can swim there i'm not quite sure the history of it i need to look that up but 
Um, it's absolutely incredible. And you can just, you can feel the intense, sacred vibration of that place. It's kind of mind blowing. Um, you're like fall silent when you walk in because it's so intense um, in a really beautiful way. And then I keep feeling like this, there's like a one mile stretch of all of my favorite places, just, <laughs> just north of that, like a quick little walk. I didn't take everyone there, but I just found this out last time I was there, but there is a natural spring that comes from my favorite mountain and the water just pours down. Somebody like attached a spigot to it and you can like get all of your water. So I like drink that like magic mountain water for two months straight. Wow. And that, that was awesome. Um, and then if anyone like really has time and the guts to do, I would honestly probably boat in, but the Kalalau trail is supposed to be the most incredible thing. It's an 11 mile hike, um, there, 11 miles there, 11 miles out. It's, I think one of the top nine most dangerous hikes in the world. It's, it's pretty intense, but people do it all the time. And Kalalau Valley and the beach, um, on the other end are just stunning. You can also get boated in, um, if you don't want to do the hike. But it is like live off the land, no cell phone service. People grow their food there, have community meals. It's supposed to be this incredible experience. And that's definitely what I will be doing next time I go back. That's fantastic. Wow. Um, so those are great places. And I think the last place, I'm like, huh, I have to uh -huh. add that to my list because, you know, I definitely have Kauai on my my list for places to return, which is rare for me because usually after I go a place, I'm kind of like, ah. Eh. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even if I have an amazing time, I think because there's so many places in the world to see, um, usually it's it's unlikely for me to do a return kind of repeat trip, but there is something about that place <laughs> that right? I'm just like, oh my gosh, like my spirit was, I was really shell-shocked, honestly, when I got back to Miami. Um, I was just like, I, I don't know what's going on. Like, what, what, what am I doing here? Like, I should be <laughs> like in Kauai. But it was just... It was crazy. So yeah, those are, those are, that was a great list. Um, thank you. And You're so, welcome. um, so you also own a photo booth business, um, and where, like I say, a couple of hats as an entrepreneur, but as you also mentioned, you really designed your life so you can be anywhere, work from anywhere and not have to work, you know, 40 hours a week, um, and really get to nurture your creativity. So what really fuels this dedication to creating a career and life of freedom? Oh, I just, I'm so stubborn. <laughs> um, I, I love freedom. I need it. Um, and that's like freedom in everything. I really want the freedom to travel when I want to, to take a nap when I need to, to take baths when I want to, to see my friends when they're in town, um, to just like listen to my body and it cycles and decide when I want to work and when I want to play and when I want to rest, just to be able to say yes or no to opportunities that come my way to be able to use my intuition to like decide which opportunities I'd like to take. Um, I didn't actually even like know that I was going to be self-employed. <laughs> it wasn't a lifelong goal at all. I had just had so many jobs and I'm like, I feel bad saying this, but I'm kind of a bad employee because I'm like, I come first, <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. That would be on my resume. Not the best employee. Um, I quit things when they don't feel good anymore, <laughs> but I have the freedom to do that. And that feels really good for me. <laughs> so I started the photo business, photo booth business first, um, just because it fit all of these items on a list. I literally made a list out of for like the job that I wanted. And I, it had like, I want to be able to sleep in in the morning. I want to feel creatively fulfilled. I want a job that's really lighthearted. I want something where I can work a shorter amount of hours for more money. I want to be able to travel when I need to, don't want to work 40 hours a week, all of these things. Um, and that kind of just popped into my head. It was a random idea. I had no aspirations of becoming a photographer or a photo booth woman or even self-employed. Um, and I just kind of said, Oh, I wonder if like I could do that. I bet I could start that business and like kind of wrote down all of the financials and the plan of like, Oh, what, the, what would that actually take? What would that look like? And it kind of just seemed like, well, I might as well try. Um, and that's just kind of been my attitude about everything since where it's like, well, I might as well try it. Like really what's the risk. Um, other than, you know, a few thousand dollars and some pride, but like, might as well try. <laughs> so, yeah, totally. Uh, okay. So I think that, you know, when a lot of entrepreneurs, like, 
they hear, you know, kind of people like us talk about, you know, having our own businesses and all this freedom. But I like to talk about money as well. Yeah. Um, because it's I think it's it's real or it is real. And because truthfully, you know, um, the experience of being an entrepreneur is not always as magical or smooth. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> so can you tell us a story about a financial challenge that you've experienced as an entrepreneur and how you got out of it? Oh, absolutely. Um, gosh, there's a lot of them. Um, I'm trying to think of like what the timeline was. I'm pretty sure. So I started the photo booth business. And, you know, I set my rates and knew that I was going to do some discounts to get started. Um, and I feel like maybe eight months had passed. And I remember one day just breaking down and crying and thinking, is anyone ever going to want to pay me? Like, are, is anyone other than nonprofits offering exposure for me ever going to call? Like, <laughs> I was like, this is the worst idea. What am I even going to do? Um, and I just remember being like, it's going to be okay. This is going to work. I don't even know if I did anything different, but just calm down about it. And I remember getting my first booking and it was just, <laughs> it was just magical. Wow. It felt so good. It wasn't, I mean, there was really no story about like what I did, I guess, about it. Um, I just kind of sat with it and was like, all right, I guess I'm just going to have to trust this is going to work out. Like at some point this is going to take off. Um, and I finally got that booking and things just started rolling from there. Like once I had one, I kept like promoting and putting it online and um, people would see, oh, you're doing, you're working with them. We want to book you too. And then you kind of start getting referrals and it just keeps expanding. I'm trying to think of another example where I actually like, feel like I did something a little more tangible. No, you. no, no. Like actually, <laughs> so I love that you talked about how you just calmed down. Because I think that, I mean, money makes people panic. Like yeah. I've been there totally <laughs> before where I'm like, what the fuck is going on with my bank account? Like how in the world did I get down to $20? Like, or yep. shit, how in the world did I get to a negative account? <laughs> I've had those days too. And so like, seriously, the art of calming down and trusting mm -hmm. the process, because truthfully, even when I think back to my brokest days that were maybe like five years ago, um, it was like, I would be there. I'd be looking at my account. I'd be like, I have no idea. How, <laughs> like, where is food going to come from? Like, what's going on? Like, do I need to call home? Like, it, it was like really intense sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it always worked itself out. Every yeah. single time. It would be like, a friend would be like, hey, like, you know, we're going to be cooking. You want to put $6 in for a week of food? Like, awesome. so, like, yeah, like, seriously. So and then I just manifested a personal chef for $6. So like, it, it's, it's things <laughs> like that where actually living in Brazil really taught me um, because it wasn't a time where I had a lot of money. Um, it really taught me what it meant to trust and to calm down because yeah. it, it, just, it didn't make sense, you know, to get all worked up. So I, I actually really appreciate that, um, that she said that. Um, and so, I mean, tell us, tell me more, like what's next for you and your business? You know, um, you mentioned planning a retreat. Um, any programs, like just feel free to share what's coming up. Yeah, I really am focusing now on planning my next retreat. February sounds good. I have no immediate, like it's not, there's no date set yet, but February just feels good for now. Um, I'm looking at doing another desire map retreat, but I also want to do um, another retreat that's focused a little bit more on the manifestation process of really setting intentions and getting connected to yourself and um, really using that as a springboard to make it all happen. Um, and just kind of going through some of the things that I do in order to connect to tune in and to actually like how to brainstorm, how to like get rid of all the shit that's holding you back. Um, just like little tools, like I want to bring in a little bit more tools and visualization um, and manifesting. And then, you know, I don't know, I'm really, really open right now to what's going to happen next. I was actually looking at my website before this call and being like, okay, like <laughs> refresher as if I need a refresher for like who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking, looking at my site and I was looking at my about page and it was really a beautiful moment because I was reading, like, I have this part being like, this is kind of what I believe. This is where I'm at right now in my life. And this is where I want to go. And all the things in this is where I want to go, I now have to move up to this is what I'm currently doing. And I was like, holy shit, what's like, what now? 
Um, So that just, I feel like I just want to like sit with that for a little while being like, holy crap, I'm actually living the life that I had always dreamed of. Like I'm actually doing my biggest dream right now. Um, And how do I want to magnify it? Because I honestly, I I don't want to say that I don't want anything else or I'm not striving for more, but like, I'm actually very excited to be doing what I'm doing and I just want to intensify it. And let that grow. Like I really want to continue doing um, retreats and private coaching. And I'm just, I guess I'm just open right now to whatever comes. So we'll see. You're such a light, Jeanette. So thank you for showing up in the world. Thank you for sharing your work. And, um, and thank you for coming on the show, of course. Thank you so much for inviting me. You're amazing. Thank you. So to all of our listeners, you can learn more about Jeanette on her website, JeanetteCastellari.com, J-A-N-E-T-T-E-C-A-S-O-L-A-R-Y. And we will also link it up in the show notes. Um, And hopefully you can attend one of this woman's amazing retreats in the Yucatan. I guess it's coming up um, because you know you need a soulful vacation. So definitely hop on it. And thank you, everyone, for listening. You can subscribe to The Arielle Lauren Show on iTunes, Android platforms, and YouTube. Just follow the links on ariellelauren.com. But don't click off this episode just yet. I always like to give a free gift, discount, or special offer away for every episode. So hold on for a few seconds. Are you dreaming of taking your business, book, music, or creative project on the road? Learn how me and Navita Robinson were able to travel across the country and all over the world while promoting our businesses to new audiences. Go to touringforstartups.com and get in-depth training to plan your own promotional events and get everything you need to take your work on the road. touringforstartups.com